Yeah, dude, I know. I'm already like emotional now. We haven't even started. Really? Okay. Ready? Okay. So welcome everyone. This is episode 10 um, in Real Talk with Casey and Jojo. What's up, Casey? What's up, Jojo? A lot, right? So much happening. And, so much. and it's like crazy to sit here and be still while we're talking because you kind of just... If not, we're just ongoing, right? So let's talk. What are we talking about today? The B. The B. Um, Betsy Ross. Betsy. And not just Betsy, but how that brought us to be more open to our intuition or to be able to tap into our intuition or understand her in a different so, level or understand everything in a uh, different level right introduce her no <laughs> okay Nobody so knows. they're like who's betsy okay so your grandma no. <laughs> <laughs> betsy is our um what what's the word that i'm trying to get adopted dog yeah but what was she a rescue dog um she was our rescue dog we got her on you wrote it down december, december 4th, 4th of 2016 a lot was happening then there was a shift um, happening. I think she was like the, the the one that kind of brought us together, right? So we had, um, if you've seen our twin flame journey before in episode, I don't know what. Um, <laughs> before this one. <laughs> you would know that uh, there was a time when Keith and I were divorced. Um, so this was back in April of 2016 that we were, that we got divorced and then I moved in on <laughs> June of 2016. So not that much <clears throat> later, uh, May, June. Yeah, two months later, I was already back home. Um, it was a new home and there was a lot of changes. And so it was June and then December came around. And can I tell the story of how, how she came into our lives? Or? Yeah, but before we get, get kind of get going on the story of, of the bee. Okay. Um, you know, kind of understanding as a listener that she's a metaphor for a lot of things. Uh, she was a metaphor for me with a lot of things. We're going to talk about that. She was a metaphor for Joanna. She was, you know, a lot of things. So she she's a metaphor and a lesson in so many ways. And that's why we wanted to, to talk about her and kind of tell her story. Um, because hopefully, you know, you can relate with maybe some things going on in your life um, as the metaphor that is the bee. The bee. Go. We call her the bee, but she's Betsy. She's also Betsy dog she's well her phone name when we when we got her was Betsy Ross and I'm like ew <laughs> Betsy <laughs> it's like a total like name for what somebody yeah like an older person yeah like, you know and somebody who does flags they called her mama bee um because right. she was a mom she had puppies um okay so you want me to share the story yes, please all right so it was December and it was a cold day, <laughs> all the same thing. right? Um, we were on our way to, I was working um, <clears throat> a direct sales, multi-level marketing business, um, skincare. And I had, where as a team, we had achieved the Lexus at the time. You get a Lexus when you reach a certain goal. So I was celebrating at the Lexus dealership with my entire team, the people who were there for support, et cetera. And long story short, I was very excited, but I was go, go, go. Cause this was like a big thing, a big party. And my daughter came with me to office max. Cause we needed some last minute index cards uh, for a giveaway we were doing. And so we rushed to office max and on our way, there's a bunch of puppies outside um, at PetSmart. Puppies. Puppies. Keyword. And before this, I just want to say the kids had been talking about getting a dog um, for a while. And do you remember this? Go. I don't know. I was like, no to the no to the no, no, because we had already had <laughs> dogs and no. it didn't work out. We had to remember when we broke up, we had to give away the dog. We had uh, birds. We had to give away the birds. Like we were getting rid of all the things that were just adding drama to our lives. Yes. We, neither her nor I have had very good dog experiences, even though I am a self-proclaimed animal lover, like love animals. What's going to be a vet. Yeah. But we had really never had good experiences with dogs up and I in, did until I was 11 and then my dog died. Um, and then I think after that, I just didn't have an attachment like that anymore. And I and think that was as a result of you pushing away actually dealing with the death of your first dog because mm -hmm. you love that dog 
Right. Yeah, I was also really little though. And so, I mean, what is love when you're that little and you don't really understand it at that depth, you know? But you do. Like I do now. But you I mean, do. I ch- yeah. Okay, so let's go back. <laughs> so we're over here. We see these puppies. They had been asking for a dog. Um, I said to them, if you happen to see a picnic blanket on the floor in the grass with dogs coming out of a basket, Forgot about that. remember yep. with dogs coming out of a basket and one dog has one colored eye, like blue and the other one Brown, then I'll consider having a dog. Remember they were looking, um, you know, through different online and trying to find a dog. And I'm like, Nope, it has to be this way. Well, the next door neighbors at the time, we pull into the driveway and we see a blanket and we see a box. It was tipped over. There was a bunch of puppies. And I'm like, um, <laughs> okay, this no. is a sign. And so I never, B, you want to say hello? Cause you're being <clears throat> really, um, no, I go. okay. So this happened and I'm like, okay, this is a sign that I should consider a dog. And because that happened, it was in the back of my mind. So here we are, we see some puppies and I stopped and I asked, you know, are you going to be here tomorrow? And they said, yes. So we were like, okay, I'll come back. We'll come back tomorrow. I promise. So we go to my event, have a great time. The next day, Hey, you said you were going to take me, you know, to see puppies. So we go, they're all inside. Um, now there's a variety of different ones and you want to go from there. Cause I know you remember, I said, we're going to go look at some puppies. Let's go. Yeah. And I took, I didn't, I wouldn't know. I wanted no part of this. I'm like, whatever you guys picked the dog. I was over looking at hamsters and birds and, and various other things. Um, but they came and got me and they were like, come, come see if you like her. And I walk around the corner and it's a dog with a like arm that's curved, like not bow legged. Well, no, back up, back okay. up. There was a bunch of puppies. They're all jumping everywhere. And then I look, because before that, you know, I look and I'm like, why is that one so chill? Like, why is that one? Like, it's not a puppy. Obviously, it was pretty big. It's an adult. And I said, but but it's chilling. It's sitting there like with its person. Like, is that its person? And so I went up and I'm like, is this your dog or is she up for adoption too? And he's like, no, she's up for adoption. But he kind of had like that feeling of attachment with her like but you know like she's good you know and so I said can I take her for a walk around the the aisles and as soon as she be like as soon as I started taking the first steps and she started walking I was like oh this is my dog I felt it right away and so I looked at him like "Hmm, this is it so now you come on and you're like what is this (laughs) (laughs) this is not a puppy because she wasn't a puppy. that was my expectation was you know she was a puppy i i was expecting i don't i was expecting a puppy period and i have a full-grown dog who has a has a bent arm she's very homely looking like sad like old soul type type look on her and she had just had puppies so she's got like saggy boobs and stuff and i'm like this is the dog you <laughs> this saggy like, with with a she was missing or she's still missing um a thumb yeah she was missing a thumb i mean i was like really for real because i mean you know we're, we're a little bougie to some degree and I, I just was like really that that one that one okay and that's that shallow thinking for sure that you know judging a book by I know its more. cover yeah, right i know more than the creator when you know intuitively and feeling wise like when you take that first step and you walk with them you can know if you're connecting or not like regardless of what it looks like i'm like she's chill i don't think any puppy out there is chill i wanted a chill dog and i was like she's calm she's peaceful she looks like a rottweiler because she's a mix between rottweiler german shepherd and yeah and and this has nothing to do with anything but we didn't realize until after we got her that our first dog that we had together who was named honey was like a spitting image of her but we had to get rid of honey because she was so big and you know we just and we were i was having a baby yeah we, we had isaac and and so we we got rid of her only for that reason but it, but she wasn't cool. chill she wasn't chill no she was so, she was a puppy so she was like a another version of that but like a better version because because she was calm she was chill she was trained i mean when i say trained like 
never goes inside the All house. All the bells and whistles. Um, and so here's where the intuition comes in. So we we get her, right? Um, there's a picture of when we first got her. See it? Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah. And so um, we got a picture of her. We, you know, we're super excited. Like, yay, this is our dog. We come home. She's super chill. Um, she lets us know when she needs to go out. And this is where I started picking up on my intuitive um, my telepathic ways, right? I started to really have this bond and this communication with her where I felt like I knew exactly what she was trying to tell me and when she was, what she needed, um, what she was thinking, you know, how she was feeling. And I ran with it. I'm like, this is cool. Like I'm going to keep on. And it's built this like thing, this love for an animal that I never thought I could have. Yeah, and, and it was the same for me, but but the story was a little bit different. So kind of give you a backdrop. Um, she was shot multiple times. Oh, yeah. Um, she, she has shotgun pellets in her arm still. And you can like, you know, basically rub her arm and fill the pellets in her arm. So her arm was broken, which is why it kind of looks crooked. And, you know, she had had puppies, so whatever. So who knew, who knew how much trauma, you know, abuse this, this dog had been through, but she was, she was amazing. I mean, she was calm. She was grateful. Yeah. Grateful. I mean, you can just tell the energy she gave off was she, there was just so much appreciation that you felt she just from wanted her. rubs. And yeah. That's all she ever wanted was just to be around you and for you to like rub her and, and just acknowledge her. And so anyway, so like knowing that, um, you know, I'd always sort of looked at dogs, even though I loved them, I didn't look to look at them with any depth, right? Like I never thought a dog could, you know, I, I felt her sadness and I felt her happiness and I felt her gratefulness. Like and I'm she's like, conscious. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I felt her consciousness. Thank you. And <clears throat> so that was new for me. I'd never experienced that with an animal, but you know, kind of the way it all happened. And, you know, Joanna, telling me about her experiences, you know, we kind of went through the getting to know Betsy and be introducing Betsy to our lives. It's like, okay, hold up. Like I had been kind of a non-believer of this energy stuff, right? I had been kind of a non-believer of this intuition stuff. Like I'm, I get it, but you know, I'm a, you got to show me, show me in real life and real time. It. Right. I, I needed to experience it before I could buy in or even really, you know, believe it. I just needed to feel it and experience it myself. And that's what she brought into our lives. So you know, kind of take a step back. Um, you know, Joanna, we had moved back in in June and, and it had been a long road to kind of get to that point. Um, and I think, you know, for me, I, I was in a state of mind where, you know, when you really, when you work really hard for something and that, that was kind of my mindset is I, I wanted to win her back. I wanted to prove to her that, you know, I was, you know, better changed all these things. Um, when really all I'm doing is proving it to myself, right. Looking back on it, but that was my mindset. And so when she moved back in, I, I think there's a tendency, or at least I took a, a exhale, like, oh, like I, I look at how far we've come, look at all these things I've done. Well, in that exhale, I also was sort of exhaling or, or inhaling or exhaling, I don't know, resentment, right? So I had all this resentment that I had covered up with this, you know, trying to change, trying to be better, trying to be this. It. Right. Suppressed. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> suppressed it you mean i'm good with my words today <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i had suppressed all these things and and they were starting to come up you know from that june period until we got betsy so now in comes betsy right betsy is super sensitive to raising voices when you when you are angry and you don't even show it she feels it right mm, she'll come right there and she'll stand right in front of you like right and and you know anytime joanne and i got into a, a discussion that turned that elevated you know, energy to it, to a argument, basically, she would always get in between me and Joanna. Like she would sit right next to Joanna, like as a reminder, uh, -uh don't, don't do this. <laughs> right. And, and so it was such a, it, like, I'm peaceful, but I'm, but I'm gangster. Like yeah, she's, and she's gangster, hood. but yeah, she's very hood more on that later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it was amazing because she, she was exactly what I feel like Joanna needed. She was exactly what our kids needed. She was exactly what I needed in terms of being able to get past this resentment and remind me that, hey, dude, like, like simmer down with Show that your energy. energy yeah. Like you don't have to be that way, right? So, you know, that sort of put me in a position where now I'm going, all right, well, I see it. 
because I'm a show me person. I see exactly what this is doing and through, uh, through her, through Betsy, through a dog. Without her saying anything. Without her saying anything. It was just, you know, it was all just. Cause know, she doesn't bark either. Like, right. I mean, she unless she has to, but, yeah, but she doesn't really bark much at all either. And so, you know, She's it was, perfect. it was showing me and I, and I was like, okay, I got this. Like, well, how am I going to fix it? Right. And you know, that led me to, to kind of doing more child work in terms of, you know, what, how did I grow up? What, how, how was love communicated to me? How was an argument handled mm. as I, when I was a child and how it was handled is, is you raise your voice, right? You prove your point through being louder than the other person, Which doesn't really get you <laughs> right. Anywhere. And beat them into submission, basically not literally, but you know, through, through your words. And so that's just a, a good, the, I guess the first major metaphor in this discussion is that you know, had, had we not, had I not listened to Joanna, right? Cause I was dead against, her. I'm like, really that? No, no. But Joanna was like, no, this, this is the one. And I'm like, well, I wanted a dog. We all wanted a dog. So it was like, okay, cool. We'll, it was either that we'll or no dog. <laughs> and I think me and the kid, me, Easton and Isaac were all that way. Like we were sort of reluctantly accepting, uh, accepting of it, but she was perfect. And, and we knew that, you know, two days in a weekend, it did just to the perfection, just kept getting more and more perfect. Right. But that was the first major metaphor is that she showed me energetically in a dog form what my energy levels were doing. And, and, the, and it reminded me to chill. And it was so. So anyway, that was metaphor one for me. What else does she remind you? Because of this consciousness, like she's so conscious. And we were like, this is <clears throat> this is different than any other dog. Like all these other dogs are mindless, but she's like so tapped in turned on right yeah so like metaphor i guess too is that you know our daughter had started um watching some of these netflix videos on um, vegetarianism and like how animals are mistreated and so you know we watched a couple and and sort of what it did is i feel like us having an animal that was mistreated right you know shot whatever who knows um we saw the direct impact of that and her behavior i mean she's still to this day if i make a sudden move she flinches like mm -hmm. oh my god like some you know he's gonna hit me sounds like fireworks right i mean so she's so traumatized um but it helps because we felt her energy and i mean she literally is like a person to us right i mean it, it, that basically a nonverbal person but it, it showed us that man animals like animals can feel shit like animals can be sad and they and they they remember things and they have trauma it's and not like we didn't know this before but it was just on such a deeper level right yeah she brought out yeah she brought it into the house she brought the experience i think into reality it's not just seeing it on tv or or, or yeah of course animals have feelings if you you know cut them they bleed if they they'll they'll you know react or they'll cry or whatever but this was deep right and so after watching those movies with, you know, with Issa and, and seeing those Netflix documentaries, it was like, and seeing and experiencing Betsy, it's like, holy shit, like this animal thing is real. And every time we eat meat, we're contributing to this. So it sort of took us down a path of like, so is this really what we want to do? Because we, we have this beautiful representation of what an animal is and how it affects them. And, and, you know, we, through her intuition and, and whatever, and all the needs we, we have, we, she's been placed in our life for a reason. Like what, what's the next reason? Pass on the respect, right? I'm gonna not going to eat meat out of respect for every other, you know, abused animal. How and that was our thinking. How long did it take before we got her and then you started on your, or we started on our vegetarian? About two years. Cause it was, for me, it was November, 2018. No. Yeah. Is that right? 19? I don't know. It's either 18 or 19. Yeah. So it's about remember. two years ish. But right. I mean, I mean, speak to that in terms of, of kind of how it pushed us towards ve being vegetarian, basically, and towards vegan. Right. Cause I mean, it's just a matter of perspective, right? Before we were conditioned, I was, I would say just because of society, um, you know, this is what you do. This is what you eat. And I just never looked at the other side of things, honestly, like, they show you a coin and they show you one side and you're just so used to that one side. But did I ever turn it around and look at it from this direction and then make a choice of which one I choose instead of it just being whatever I've been told. And, and so it gave me that choice of, wait a second, there's another side to this. Like I could still eat something, enjoy it, actually be healthier, um, you know, intuitively get stronger 
because it's just this, this relationship now with my own body that tells me what I should and shouldn't eat. Right. All these things on this side, I'm like, shoot, I'm going to go with the side that, that makes me feel better. And, and it was with her being so conscious that I started paying attention to how conscious, you know, cows are and how conscious, you know, pigs are. And I'm like, oh my God, I want a pet pig. I want a pet cow. Like I want all these animals because you go from this like dimensional level of we're in the 3D. We're all about me, me, me. It's all about how do you serve man, right? Then you move into this fourth dimension of like time and space where you're going, wait, I can sense that, you know, in the 5D, it's like all unity, right? And I can sense that it's there. I can sense that I can have this like love for all and be all for one and not just like one at the top. It's it's all of us. It's all the animals, all the, like you become so um, unconditional and like the fear starts to break down and you start feeling more loving and you start going outside. Remember I started saying like, I felt like Snow White. Like when I go outside and all the animals would come, it was that type of feeling the birds. because no, what happened? We, Squirrels. we had cats. No, we had two cats. cats that, that came while we had Betsy mm-hmm. and I was always fearful of cats. And all of a sudden I had this like love and this no fear type of feeling anymore. And it's like the fear had shattered and now I'm petting a cat. Which is huge. Cause she would never be in the same room. No. As a cat. Then we let the Presence. cat in the house. It was chilling with Betsy. Then we buried the cat. We buried the cat. But um, CC. So all these things are levels of, of frequency. Like the higher the frequency, the more love for the animals, more love for, you know, others. And so that is like what has shown us a lot about the changes and the difference between always looking at it in this side versus this side. Yeah. And that's the message is that, you know, I'm, we, we talked about this in genders, right? Like I represent the right brain, left brain. <laughs> I represent the left brain, right? She did the L. <laughs> I represent the left brain. She represents the right brain. You know, we walk into this pet store. That's probably why you don't ever remember because you're <laughs> <Yeah>. so left brain. <laughs> oh, Sorry. So we walk into this pet store and of course so I'm, left brain of me. I'm left brain. I'm all left brain. She's all right brain. But in, in honoring our gender perspective, I mean, I gave in and went into it. Get, okay, whatever. I'll do it. I, I give in. Because I had that right. deep, like, this is it. Yeah. But that's, that's the lesson, right? Is that had I not, had I stayed firm in my conviction, of no, I don't want a dog like that. No, we're not ado- adopting that dog. I'm sorry. No. Then all of these things that that she brought about in terms of our lives, in terms of realizations and, and just raising our consciousness, would they have happened? I don't know, but they happened and unfolded beautifully, right? Yeah. And it was all because, you know, you're able to step out, step from the left to the right, use your intuition. And it's so hard knowing when to and when not to, Right. Like when, when do I listen and when do I not? Um, but that's a skill I think that you, you develop as you go through this and, you know, you fast forward to today, just to kind of wrap up the vegetarian metaphor. Um, I mean, we're now on, on a path where, you know, we're looking at, what is it? Fruit, fruitarians, fruitarian. And I'm like, you know, is that possible? Is it I don't real? know, <laughs> but you know, and, and this is, I'm gonna get off topic for a second, but any of, um, any gym people out there or nutrition people out there, I want to, I want to share this because, you know, my biggest, my biggest issue with, with going to vegetarianism was the protein aspect, right. Which we've all been beat down with macros and I'm functioning at a, at a point in my life now where I probably get I don't know, 60 grams of protein a day. And that's only through supplementation. Probably I don't track my calories. I don't track my macros. I don't do any of those things, right? But I've maintained the same weight that I maintained when I used to do all of that and track all of those things. So my point is, is that I don't know that food is really what we've been sold. And Mm -hmm. and that's something that I'm working through, um, trying to research a little bit. But if you're, if you're on that journey and, and you've sort of had some intuitive insights as to maybe there's more to food than just simply macros, and maybe it's not about how much I eat, maybe it's more energetically, um, we're going to go into this a little bit later on. Maybe but, we should just do a podcast on that. Yeah, we, we will. But like, you know, the energy of food, 
I, I, again, I don't know. I mean, you know, gorillas are the biggest, are, are some huge muscular freaks of nature and, and they don't eat meat. So I don't know, maybe there's bananas. something to that. Bananas. I think right. they should just have bananas. No, everybody's different and everyone's can choose the path that they want to choose as far as um, where they want to be frequency wise, right? Um, and that's with physically, mentally, spiritually, et cetera. So I know that after all of this, her shedding is like the worst, but she gets on our bed and cuddles with us and kisses us to death every morning. It's like, we have a little kid again. She just jumps on there and we, and we have like her hair everywhere. And I'm like, <clears throat> I would never give her up as much as we hated shedding. Yeah. That's a good point. You know, I would never give her up. Yeah. We, we were very like, we, we had a dog that was high. It was a hyperallergenic. Is that the correct term? Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. she didn't shed and we perfectly something doodle. we yeah all see do all doodle or something something we anyway we picked it we picked the dog out specifically because we both hate shedding well betsy and all her preciousness and glory is a shudder unbelievable and now we have a husky that sheds unbelievably but it just goes to show again that when you think with that left side of the brain you come up with many reasons why you shouldn't accept a potential gift that changes your life yeah when is if you know if you again if you just listen to your intuition luckily i have a wife that has a lot of intuition very strong intuition but you sadly sadly for her she's got a pretty stubborn husband so i think it just ways. strengthens our both our muscles of you know you building yours and me exercising mine yeah for sure for sure what other metaphors does she what else does she do for us vegetarianism changed our emotions um you're whispering. Am I whispering? I feel like I'm talking so loud. You're not at all. <clears throat> I'm always like, boom, on the audio thing. And you're like, chick, 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 chick. sorry. Sorry. Is there anything else? Whispering. Um, let's think. It's sad because she's so much more than, than what we're describing, you know? No, she's like a family member. She's. Yeah, she is. She's amazing. Like I, I swear that I've really built that muscle of of telepathy <laughs> because of her. And I know. I mean, really, start with your dog if you have one, a pet, and and we know what they need. They don't tell us, right? We learn the language just like babies, right? They they you start to differentiate the sounds, the cries, right? And you know, oh, this is a, a cry that they're hungry or this is a cry that they're tired or et cetera. Same thing goes for dogs. And then once you have strengthened that, take it onto the humans, right? <laughs> Go from that. And, and it's the same energy. It's the same thing. And it's like, you ask, are you hungry? Oh, no, you're not. You know, like it, and you get an answer back without even her saying anything. Right. And that's who I remember now. The, uh, the other, the other big thing for me is that it, it was amazing to me how alike this dog and Joanna were in terms R. of are in terms of how they just energetically kind of how they behave. Um, and it, it was, it was crazy because a couple of years into it of, of having Betsy, you know, I started to realize, and, and it, it would realize, I started to realize how to treat Joanna or how Joanna wanted to be treated because of how Betsy wanted to be treated. But for She's me- She's like, you don't talk to me like that. <laughs> She's yeah. stubborn. <laughs> yeah. So like, so like for me, you know, the, of course, Joanna, you know, the, the speaking aspect changes things, right? Like the body language changes things. I mean, obviously I can, she can make a face that can trigger me, whereas Betsy didn't do that to me. So Betsy provided a way for me to sort of see and interact and test things. And, and, and it was cool. It was like a testing ground, but there was no verbal, there was no, you know, there was no faces, there was nothing to trigger me. So I can accept the information and process it without having to deal with the triggers. But then I would sort of move it in this direction towards her and it would work. And I'm like, Oh, this is crazy. Insane. I'm like, this is amazing. Man. I mean, you know how it is that a person and their dog, they're, they're very alike. Like they look alike, they act alike. Like she's, She's peaceful, but she's thug. And that's me. <laughs> I mean, look at, tell them what she did. Like she, we, she's really calm and peaceful, but you never know how dogs. So to give you, yeah, to give react. you an idea, she, she, when, when you come into our house, if you do not greet her, she will bite you on your ass. And this isn't, 
the, the minute you turn your back from her, she'll go up and she'll nibble just a little on yeah, your Yeah, it's not like a bite. Like, it's not a bite. Like, like I took some skin off. It's and... like a pinch, right? But that's basically her way of saying, greet me, which is- And you know, who she... are you to walk up into this house? Like- Right, and not greet me. Like, like I'm I'm the protector of this or house. Or I just, greet I don't me. know you. Like, where are you going? Like, there's so many things that she's like, uh-uh. Once you say hi to her, then she's good. Yeah, and she she demanded respect, but- so non-verbally and and you know i guess for me again because of how i was raised it was very it was very hard for me to as the man bow down to the woman even though i knew that that's what should happen but she helped me learn to release that right and realize that no the queen is the queen and you respect the queen at all times i mean yeah of course she needs to be talked to in some ways sometimes but you know that's 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 a different subject i mean you just you you feel me you you gotta de- respect needs to demand respect but that needs to be given as well if that makes sense mm-hmm. are you going to share what she did with uh cora i mean yeah it's gonna be short though because okay. i don't want to get into like all the details okay but you know long story short <clears throat> my son wanted a uh husky and so he he got one and of course betsy's a little jealous and we got the husky as a puppy so oh she got God. to kind of grow up i guess with betsy but um she was very annoying to I betsy much energy a lot. And, and betsy put up with it for a really long time but then one day she snapped and and she basically bit the you know the other dog cora to where her tooth um punctured her eyeball and so, you know, she, we thought she was going to, you know, lose an eye long, you know, she ended up being fine, whatever stitches, veterinarian bills yeah. later. Um, she was good. She had to go through surgery, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that's the thug that, that, you know, Joanna. But even about. then, even then, like we still were like all up in her face and not scared about how she, like, she wouldn't do that to us type, you know, like, okay, it's a dog. She's been like on her face, scratching her, jumping on her, all this stuff we get it you know and at the same time she felt bad because she knew something happened and she just was like "Mm -hmm," for so long like oops and then especially because um cora wasn't allowed downstairs anymore so yeah because we had to separate them we had to separate them because we didn't want that to happen again and you know even then we weren't scared to get up in her face because we have that energy that connection um it's going to be super sad when she goes um, but hey, we have a whole podcast dedicated to her. So, <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't, I know it's easier said than done, but you know, every it's crazy. And I think there's a lesson in this that another lesson that she teaches is that, you know, every morning before I get up and, and when the mornings after coach, I'm up at like four, three thirty, four o'clock, and I sit with her on the couch and, you know, I, I sort of, you know, pet her very gratefully, like, thank you, thank you for everything, thank you for the lessons and, and that in and of itself is a lesson because you know if one day I get up and, and she's she's you know breathed 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 her last breath you know I'm not I'm not going to cry because I because she's gone I'm I'm going to cry out of gratefulness right like for all the lessons I'll miss her and and, and I'll miss you know all the things but but I'm not going to cry because she was taking away I'm gonna I'm gonna be so grateful for the lessons right because it's just it's it's amazing all this all the stuff that she's taught and we're not even scratching the surface of of all the things that that she's taught and, and, us. Not, and not just you and i but to the kids yeah to the kids too for sure but again it's just be open to anything that that can come your way um that you you never know like what that thing you're you think you should reject for superficial reasons could be the thing that changes your life or be like do what i did and be specific on if this is the case then i'm going to see it this way and then if the universe shows it to you that's a sign you know because for the yeah. whole picnic thing and True. you know the blanket and all that to happen exactly the way i said i'm like well this is the universe telling us we need a dog in our lives and you know how the universe does it places all the pieces exactly right at the right time because imagine if i didn't need that index card and i didn't go and we didn't see the puppies and we didn't see them the next day and we didn't have her we could be divorced again oh my god (laughs) so yeah it could go in so many directions and just be open to what the universe has in store for you because it could be it could bring you a lot of healing that you didn't know you needed like we didn't know that she was going to help us heal in so many ways. 
and that she would still keep you in check because, you know, as soon as the temper goes up, she'll remind you, hey, yep. chill, chill. So anyway, I hope, hope, hope this helped out. Hope you, hope you guys can relate to this in some way, shape or form and translate it into, you know, hopefully accepting a future gift or maybe you're you're faced with that decision right now and hopefully this helps sort of solidify that and have some confidence and faith that you're doing the right thing because yeah i'm so glad that uh joanna made us <laughs> <laughs> quietly not not aggressively quietly get 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 her because yeah she's been a blessing amazing you done yeah i'm good i think we're good all right guys Thank you for watching and we will see you on our next podcast number 11. Gotta what? Carry what? It up on that one do something special. Right? Um yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.